bring back to the to the mic. And Scarlet Rose, she brings a wealth of energy to AMMV, and she's going to be a force to reckon with in the future as we go forward, attempting to navigate ourselves around recognition, legacy, and history. Scarlet, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Scarlet. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. This is my first convention, and it feels like I'm going to be back. <laughs> it didn't scare me off. <laughs> anyway, uh, the history of Quilts of Valor, that, this organization, the foundation, has been around for about 20 years. And the, the lady who started this, Catherine Roberts, her son Nat served in Iraq. So that was her inspiration for why she got into the idea that she wanted to make a special quilt which would be awarded to uh, a veteran. And it, that's their restriction is, is it does have to be a living veteran with a DD-214. We're going to work on that issue. You're going to hear about some of that later. Anyway, um, and so once I got this job of vice president in January, I immediately thought in terms of what could I do to bring to this organization. I've been involved in helping with research about Merchant Marine for a number of years, but uh, my other, uh, my main occupation is I'm a quilt teacher and a quilt designer, and I do a bunch of stuff related to quilting. I'm not a member of Quilts of Valor, I'll mention that, but there is a chapter in my area and those lovely ladies are the ones who made this quilt and allowed me to bring it here today. So Quilts of Valor, their whole thing is they want this quilt to, um, for the veteran who's receiving it. It's to give them comfort, bring them a message of hope and well-being. So I feel um, when we decided to do this that the perfect person would be Mr. Dave Yoho. So if you would like to speaking about his experience, which I know is very difficult. And it's something that we greatly appreciate, the amount of education that he has provided, and the people he's made of aware of our cause. So, um, Mr. Dave, are you willing to receive this quilt of valor? Uh, a number of nice things. Uh, I look at that from a distance and say, that's not really for me. I'm really accepting it for all the people who signed on there. Of course. And there are 17 others. That, and I want them to be comforted with this thought. Mm -hmm. I sleep in the nude. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. They will be comforted to know that that goes with them. <laughs> If you seek among you those that are important to your life, never, never underrate the power of someone who you didn't know and who you will get to meet. Now, people ask me, and on the radio show, they ask me all kinds of stupid questions. Uh, they interview me for the voice of guy will say, now, is it you know your real name, or did you change it? I said, think about that, baby. If I was going to pick any one name and I had all in it, do you think I'd have picked Yoho? <laughs> so, when you say these things, sometimes a thing like that is insignificant. Uh, I have been trying to downsize my home. We, my lovely wife and I, we live in much too much space for two people. Uh, we said that in the house that we left and we're still in a big house. But there are certain things I won't give up, and that's one thing that will carry on. I'm not going to take it to my grave because I'm going to be cremated and I don't want it to go that way. <laughs> then you're really warm. So what I say to you is this is significant emotion. Excuse me, no private conversation is what I'm talking about. I think you get away with it. And I have your name and address, and I know how you get away with it, right? So, uh, and, and I want to tell you, it's warming to my heart to be selected to be carrying this for you. I, I, I do, I, wanna, I must tell you a story, though, because I just told it to a gentleman here. I've done all sorts of things in the speaking world, and being an honor guest one time in New York City with the dais, two levels of dais, and a man had a heart attack and died prior to my speech. 
So uh, we didn't know he had died, by the way. <laughs> so, hey, sir, you don't, don't miss this is a good point. It's coming. <laughs> so the, what, what happened was this, that that poor guy, the minute he got that somebody got the, the fire engines in there to try to resuscitate, but he had passed away. And now you say, uh, the sergeant and the gentleman there, and I say, now what do you do? So another man in the audience, his last name was Jackson, mm -hmm. and he was called the Mouth of the South. He was a reporter from Jackson, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And he got up and he said, would this not be the most appropriate time to say a prayer? And he had everybody clasp their hands and he prayed for the departed soul of that person. So now I say, if that's embedded in my life, what do I do with that? And so I turned it into a funny story. Can you believe that? And someday I'll be telling a funny story about the quilt. That and that's I, perfect. You and I together under the quilt. And stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I turned it into the story. I said, when you make speeches, now I get paid to make a speech. And it wants to be succinct and to the people there. Right. But we got in this night, we have a big dais, dais again, with a lot of people sitting up yeah, there. And everybody, out, everybody, yeah, we're still here. You're in charge. You remind me of Vida. Uh, yeah, this is the judge. I know you'll get even, so I'm not going to, let me get back to my story. So anyhow, the story goes like this, that we were there, and uh, from going and on and on. And just before they're introducing a man stood up and said, hey, I'm from the Chamber of Commerce. I wonder if I could say a few words. So let him say a few words. But he didn't say a few words. He kept talking and talking. And one of the waiters, saying that the people were getting bored, went around and filled up the coffee cups. But in so doing, he moved rapidly. And the man to the left of me, he hit him in the back of the head with the coffee pot. And the man went, <laughs> face down to the mashed potatoes and the gravy. And someone had the good foresight to reach down and grab by the collar and lift him out of that. And the man was heard to say, hit me again, I can still hear him. <laughs> so God bless you and thank you so much. And I will, and I will treasure that. Well, stand right here. The next part, this is very important, the Colts of Valor. I have to wrap you in it. And that's your photo opportunity. You get to see him wrapped in a special quilt. Wrap it down. Thank you.